nevertheless, uh, I'm here and after listening to the session between Dr. Uh, Samsul and Dr. Morshidi, I thought I'm in the wrong place. <laughs> I think the discussion was very enlightening and I'm not too sure how much of my discussion today will add on to all the previous discussions that we have had. Nevertheless, I will try to, to, to convey what has been asked of me to talk about building academic leaders in a resource-constrained environment. And I, need, I think there is something which is kind of an uh, act that every one of us here, at least in Malaysia, is facing this so-called resource-constrained environment. Right? Uh, as far as higher education is concerned, I would just like want to start with this slide to show that there are concerns without even resource constraints. We have been talking about this, at least in the context of where I come from, with the International Association of Universities. These are issues that is very close to our heart. The question of access, the question of equity, the question of success. In other words, we can get people into the university, but we get them out. You know? And if we get them out, we get them in the relevant context that they are supposed to get properly in the university. Yeah? We talk about academic freedom, we talk about what sort of talent is what is discussed, I think, uh, with, with the panel just now, and of course, the whole rigmarole of what money and resources means to us, which is going to be the focus of this talk. And henceforth, is about how do we organize the university. Is university structures to be relevant? The way we organize our university, coming from the pre-industrial model of a factory. I mean, I always liken our, fact, our university to a factory. There's a lot of similarities if you, do, if you go on a point-to-point basis of how you produce goods and how you produce quote unquote now human capital. There's not much difference as far as And therefore, is a concept, is a value, and is a model relevant, regardless whether it is resource constrained or otherwise. Yeah? So these are issues that isn't at the back of our mind. That has always been there for us to think about when once you start working in university, being an academic and such. Yeah? But I want to go back also to understand in Southeast Asia what are the common things that we think it's important for us as a region to develop as far as university is concerned. And if you look at this, we are not resource constrained in terms of diversity. We have such tremendous diversity in terms of culture, system, tradition. Yeah. And therefore, this is not uh, a question of, uh, of, of uh, constraint aside, it's a question of how do we get it? How do we become multicultural? How do you learn from each other? How do you share the so-called system learning from the best of us and make it the best of an ASEAN model rather than a Western-centric model? I have no problem with Western models, but is that the only model that we can succumb to? What about our own tradition? What about our own values? I mean, very much talked about in the last in the last session. But we have one one size fit all kind of university that all of us need to go into this kind of ranking league table and say we are there and we are part of them. Can't we develop something which is new? Because we have got our own diversity, our own system, <laughs> our way of thinking. Yeah? We are rich in tradition, in wisdom, and in many other things that perhaps do not even exist in other part of the world. Where has this gone to? You know, China has 5,000 years of civilization. India has another 5,000 years of civilization. You know, compared to the Western civilization of 300 to 400 years, we have to collapse also. But where do you put these in the context? And this is something that I think we need to think about when we talk about systems and also the university moving forward. Yeah? Nevertheless, the reality is also not as, as, as right as it is. There are challenges, and the challenges we see today, China exerting its power, you know, uh, problems in Middle East, uh, Middle, uh, West Asia, which is part of Asia, full and full, to the country percent. And recently, of course, the whole idea of people in Rohingya being killed, where we use, where the world world to use as a genocide, or being misaligned, or whatever. These are issues, I think, Again, that works on what we talked about in terms of the rich culture that has not been practiced in this particular sense. Yeah? And of course, last but not least, we want to find out will we be able to sustain this? Do we come out as a region that is strong, or do we continue to be fragmented and also be 
perspective and the other sort of issues that will distract us from thinking of what academia and also university is all about. Yeah. And just to remind us, we also have got very scary experience in Cambodia, what, what we did was there. Carl Savage, you cannot find anywhere in the world except for this part of the world. And millions of them, if you visit them, you feel the scariness of what can happen once you, you know, do not go into this whole rich culture and system that we talked about and start to think of the different way of looking at things. And of course, today, the question of where, what's happening to the Rohingyas, whether the asset people are going to take us on as a group, or is this something that non intervention and if there are problems, you deal with it, you don't care, right? So these are issues that I think would be the context of the kind of discussion that we're going to have, and I hope you can put this in context and play a role as an academia, in the academia and the academician, how do you get into some of these issues? These are not 100% non-academic in a sense. We have some role to play in trying to articulate some of these issues. So one of the issues that we face in the 21st century, looking at what has been happening, I think since the 21st century, 16 years now, I can probably summarize into four things. One, the huge uncertainty ahead of us. Nobody could predict what's going to happen tomorrow. Everybody predicted Hillary Hillary Clinton's going to win. But look what happened. Yeah? Uh, nobody can even predict uh, what's going to happen tomorrow or the yeah, after tomorrow because of the kind of uncertainty we're facing today. Right? And for that, I think we need to be socially engaged. In other words, we need to go down to the ground no longer lofty ivory towers kind of attitude, sitting in your uh, rooms and doing armchair sort of theories and critics. You need to go down to the ground and find out what exactly is happening. That is probably the past that you need as far as trying to make sure that the future is quote unquote certain within the limits of time. Okay? And of course, the whole idea of, of moving around and getting engaged is to find out what are the common values that you can hold on together so that we can survive as an entity, be it regionally, be it culturally, be it for, you know, whatever context it is, there must be an entity that is large enough for us to survive the future and also to work on what would be the project for the future, and then we can start moving on. Yeah? So these are the four things that I think it is important for us to think about when you move into the future and see how we're going to organize ourselves and our university in that and therefore, if this is the kind of four things that we want to work on, so what would be the skills that we need? Yeah. And in this, in, this, in this relation, I would want to just uh, summarize the four responses. If you talk about uncertainty, there must be a skill for us to anticipate. And this is a new skill, I guess. So nobody, <coughs> nobody can anticipate that far. But there is, there is enough, quote unquote, academic work that has been done now to be able to anticipate what's happening in the future in terms of foresighting, in terms of scenario planning, in terms of long view uh, planning and so on and so forth. This is something that we have not worked on because we think it is not relevant. That things are predictable or so far, but now I think these are the skills that leaders would need. How would you anticipate and how would you then make amends of what the, you know, uh, the, the issues were? One is this anticipative skill. Yeah. Once you have an anticipative skill, then you need to check whether it is relevant locally or otherwise, and this is where your social engagement comes in. You need, you need somehow rather to assimilate what has been predicted into the reality of the ground. And if you can do that, then you can really crystallize out what is relevant to us, at least for the immediate future, to plan and to move ahead so that it is a scenario that you can bank on. Right? And then to be assertive in the sense that when there are options that unifies us, then I think that's the option that we need to take. We don't want to take option that, you know, uh, what you call it, the, the, the divisiveness. Yeah. There's enough divisiveness around the world. And I think in the academia is a place where people can sit down, agree to disagree, but yet move on as a kind of an activity. The university is the one that has been surviving for a long time as compared to other institutions and therefore this is a strength that we need to capitalize on. And last but not least, because of the uncertainty, because of the kind of change that we see that is almost immediate, 
we need to move very fast. The moment you hold on to it, scenarios may change, whatever you're going to do probably may not be relevant anymore. Yeah? So I'll try to go into this very quickly in the, in the hour I look at it to me. So I call it 4 f the 4 a 4 A's yeah? of anticipated, assimilated, uh, accelerated, and emotional But more importantly, I think what giants this together is another A, which I call autonomy. It's, a, it's an issue which is very close to my heart. 